All right, hold on real quick. Before you listen to the rest of this episode, understand that we're going to spoil the fuck out of everything. Uh, last episode, we did about 20 minutes of spoiler-free content for you. So listen to that first. It says part two in the title, so you should not start with two. Unless you think you should have seen the Sonic movie, too, before the first one. All right, I'm going to begin the episode. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 127 of the Sonic Movie Show, the only show about Sonic news, movie news, and Sonic movie news. My name is Ethan, and with me here again to talk about this damn movie is Devin. You forgot one. Unstoppable. I don't know if it picked up the whole thing, but... (laughs) Yeah, uh, Devin just opened up a can of Coca-Cola. That's what the topic of today's episode <laughs> is. Coca-Cola flavors. I like the space one. No, that sounds like not. an ad. <laughs> yeah, today's sponsor is Coca-Cola. Uh, although I love myself a CCZ Cherry Coke Zero. All right, we watched the Sonic movie this, uh, four times <laughs> for episodes, and we watched the Sonic movie too uh, on the day it came out. Gave our our review of it last week. We watched it again, like, the weekend. And we are now... Four days later? Three days later? I don't know. Three days later, yeah. Time is hard right now. Wednesday and... Oh, wait. I keep thinking today is Saturday. It's Sunday. Earlier today, I thought today was Friday. It's the the day of the Lord. Damn. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is four days later. Um, I'm sorry. I woke up this morning... To just they fucking announced that they're making a Kingdom Hearts four, and like that's <laughs> I honestly, saw that before it, I even it, saw your text, and I'm like, oh, really? Fucking Ethan's gonna talk about this. <laughs> like I woke up and like I had five hours of sleep, so I was miserable. But I was in this weird place because I'm like vibrating uncontrollably about this video game announcement. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm supposed to be upset. Anyway, it made me. It actually gave me uh, some trouble watching this movie because a couple times I just drifted off thinking about the oh game. Oh my god! Got to focus back on this. Okay, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we watched uh, Sonic the Hedgehog two only in theaters for a second time, uh, and we're here to give a re-review a little bit more in depth because we've kind of gotten all of the hype and stuff out of our system. We're able to actually take a look at this film a bit uh, and give a more detailed step by step review we're going to kind of walk you through the movie so obviously as i mentioned at the beginning this is going to be full of spoilers do not listen to this episode unless you've seen the movie in fact don't listen to this episode unless you've seen both movies and played every single video game and read all of the comics i I can't even be in the conversation (laughs) damn me neither then uh those comics suck (laughs) i'm sorry the movie was great though i don't know if you want to like start off with anything overall or we want to just hop into it but yeah um so seeing it a second time uh going in i was actually hyped again like being like oh i'm excited again uh to see this and knowing what happens and seeing it uh with my partner Bryn, like knowing like oh i think she's gonna enjoy this movie so there's like that um uh and i'll say this at the theater was i think we went to it well, we saw it digitally not dolby uh because of an error uh, by my part, we both literally had a different error that resulted in us not seeing in the Dolby version. Yeah, we we suck, um, but it's fine. Maybe in a way, this is good to see if the movie holds up any differently uh, in a digital format versus the Dolby format, where everything is a little <laughs> bit louder and your seat kind of rumbles, but you kind of forget about it after like ten minutes. Um, but yeah, uh, this, the crowd was. Uh, Full. I would say the seats are all full, and the crowd was a little bit different this time compared to the opening night. There was kids opening night, but not as many. This time it was like full on like mom and dad are here with my four kids. Okay, maybe my kid's friend is here that I forgot his name, but he's here. Uh, uh, we brought a big bag of popcorn and shit. Uh, yeah. Oh, I brought my five month old baby. There's one baby. I'm like, you. Why'd you bring that baby? Like, why? There was a baby bring... in my last showing. I don't. I, it, and I'm very easily distracted, so like I was kind of bummed about that. But uh, uh, overall, though, still a good experience. Uh, I think I like the movie more now, seeing it a second time. I don't know if I want to change my rating from last time, but more of just it kind of solidified uh, my views. There were some little things, and I'm like, oh, I appreciate that a little bit more. Maybe I was a little too critical about this one thing. Maybe I wasn't critical enough about this other thing. Uh so I think this overall kind of solidified my opinion on it. Um, 
and yeah, I guess that's how I would sum it up. For me, uh, my theater is pretty empty because there was a Dolby showing less than an hour later. So I think a lot of people wanted to go see that instead. And maybe everyone also made the same stupid ass mistake I did and just didn't look at. I just was like, oh, yeah, we're going to see the movie again. Uh, I'll see it tomorrow. If this was what I did yesterday. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. 520. Awesome. And then I, I show up and I'm like, all right, let me curb up my ticket stub just so I know what seat it is. Why says auditorium six? three is the dolby one what (laughs) no (laughs) shit and i had the the thought of like do i do i just go walk the mall for 40 minutes i'm like no i've already seen the movie i don't care yeah we already drove there we got in bryn got like like she got her ticket scanned and i was like pulling my amc app and i'm like what the fuck like why isn't my ticket like usually it says like oh your current show is here Mm -hmm. and i'm like but then I saw past events that said two. It had two Sonic the Hedgehogs. And I'm like, what? Oh, no. And it said Friday. So I booked, I stole someone's seat. I didn't steal anyone's seat. I just didn't show up, I guess, right. on Friday. But I didn't get any alerts. Like, usually, like, yeah, I Yeah, it, it does say, please re- recommend your reserve or re, you know, com- commit or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if it actually but does no, anything. I get the iPhone thing when I add it to my Apple Wall, and I didn't do that. So I think that's the reason I didn't see the notification. Oh. See, I don't think I do that. I just opened up the app and let them st- – they they took them like 30 seconds to scan for my popcorn and it was embarrassing because uh, the second time now I've gone to this AMC where the regular line gets filled up and no one goes into the A-list line except me and they call me and I skip all these people – and so I just feel the, the feel... Superman laser eyes on the back of my head. And then it takes them 30 seconds to scan the barcode yeah. on my phone. I'm just like, I just want the pop. On, I've, there's been times where I see the long line and I just go in the long line because I'm like, I cannot. I just feel way too bourgeoisie to like skip everybody and be like. They could pay for it too. It's $15 for the month. <laughs> I know. I just feel like shit. And especially when I can tell people are in a rush to like, oh, we, we got late. The kids were late. Kids couldn't tie his damn shoes. That's a lesson for the kid. <laughs> He's gonna miss out on Sonic because he couldn't tie his damn shoes. So I always, I just like, but usually when we go, it's not too bad. Uh, they're at our theater. I gotcha. But. I like this theater more than um, the one that you and I used to go to, just because. Uh, if only, the only time it, we went there's there for one entrance together was the cats <laughs> on yeah. Christmas Eve, Eve or whatever. And day. I found a, I found a better <laughs> parking spot than where I had parked when we saw cats too. Much better. I park in front of the Nordstrom. In any case, I like this movie theater because it has one entrance. They take your ticket right at the door, or they scan your phone, and then, like, there's just a regular-ass line for popcorn that you just walk up, and you say what you want, and then they give it to you. Yeah. There's no, like, panels. Fantastic. Any case, for me, excuse me, <clears throat> for me, I enjoyed the movie more the second time than I did the first time. Um, a lot of it was because I had the benefit of... Uh, knowing what stuff was happening so I could just or was going to happen so I could pay attention to to certain things or not have to think about oh my god this is going to happen or oh is this going to happen I could just put all those thoughts to rest focus on the movie um there was a couple parts where I felt like uh I I really did feel like we could have um sorry Jesus I just ate for too many uh song hedgehog quills in your throat yeah um there were moments in this movie that i reconfirmed uh in my uh, head that this movie could have had some stuff cut um notably the, the two parts that i mentioned last time that we kind of agreed on um and i feel like the pacing is a little bit off in some things and i again just don't like the fact that there's just the a weird hodgepodge of music choices for this movie and they're sitting on a gold mine of of honest to god fans they can exploit <laughs> you know what i mean that have made stuff you know made their own remixes and stuff they could have done something like that um but overall i enjoyed the movie way more than i did the first time and i enjoyed the movie the first time quite a bit so why don't we go in we're gonna go step by step and just kind of talk about like general like the scenes generally we're gonna go in order um and kind of just talk about what we liked about them what we didn't like about it um well, we can kind of go back and forth. I'll kind of talk about the first one, then you do, and then you talk about the second one, and then I will, if you want. Something like um, that, yeah. So, like, Just like the uh, movie... Sonic and Tails. Yeah, they go back and forth. <laughs> I don't know what that Dialogue. means, but they go back and forth. <laughs> yeah. They... Then there's a third so... one towards the end of the film. 
<laughs> fuck, he's red too. He's got a red rocket of a punch. Um, <laughs> so the movie opens up, I think, in an awesome way where it just the full does the full screen text that just says the mushroom planet as if you're supposed to know. And if you watch the first movie, you do. But I just like the idea that someone could have not seen that. <laughs> And, like, they come in and it just says, The Mushroom Planet. It's like it doesn't even have a name. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love that. Um, we see a Rube Goldberg machine of mushrooms and rocks, and it brings, like, Eggman coffee or whatever. And I, lo- I, think, I, I uh, love that animation. But look, like, seeing it the second time, yeah, like, trying yeah, to, like, yeah. look at different details, it just looks so good visually. Like, I want to know how they pulled that off. Like, if there's yeah. – when they have the DVD set or whatever in the future, I hope they have, like, a behind-the-scenes of just, like, just that scene because I would love to know how they did that. I bet there were real props, but they were, uh, you know, CG-enhanced uh, and, you know, like, made yeah. it, you know, it extra looked, sheens it way too and good stuff for on it them. to be both yeah. – to just yeah. be just CGI. I mean – or animation. It was probably a a macro or a micro set that they had perfect lighting on. You know what I mean? It was just blue screen behind it. But uh, yeah, no, like this this sets up like a need to kind of differentiate um, the two versions of Jim Carrey's Robotnik. You know, visually he looks very different. He looks more like the Robotnik that uh, is from the games, bald with a giant mustache. I actually forget that he had a full head of hair in that first movie. He yeah, had a he, full set of hair. He looked like regular. Not regular Jim Carrey, but like, dude, he looks up. like a guy named Doctor Robotnik. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, like he's lost his 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 mind, and this is the perfect excuse for why he's weird in this movie. Like he doesn't go back. You yeah. know what I mean. He's just weird in this movie. He's goofy. Um, he's very very animated like he steals the scene i think you said this last time he kind of steals the show in certain scenes in front of actually animated sonic characters that he is an should be a slam dunk yeah irl he's a close yeah, exactly. thing to irl animated character exactly so I, I liked that like it did we, we thought that it would have opened up with the seattle stuff and we were close that's the next scene um but I like the fact that this opened up to explain, like, this guy is just nuts. But he's not, like, I don't know, self-harmful nuts. He's just wacky now. Like, that's just his he's thing. He's wired, to, like, in a way that's just his his main goal is to crush Sonic and, in, and enslave it. the galaxy. That's his, like, next step. But he knows that he can't do that as long as Sonic exists. And that's yeah. just all. that is all his wiring is at this point. He doesn't care about being he does like make jokes about being smart and stuff but in the first one he was always making jokes about how much smart he is and everyone that was kind of his thing being like i'm just interested in anything that isn't humans because humans are dumb i'm the smartest one i find my technology to be more fascinating and there's still elements of that but yeah he's now just straight wired to be like i'm gonna kill sonic like the fact that he sings an auto tune <laughs> later in the movie about himself you know what I mean? Like, that was, I love that, that part. That was cool. Yeah. Um, I think this is just fantastic. And then, yeah, he, uh, you know, he sends the distress signal laser, which we thought was something impacting the planet from uh, the trailer, but it's actually something leaving the mushroom planet. So, but then that calls uh, wherever Knuckles is from, but instead of him going first, it's these three randos, which. We, we said before it's part of the Guardians of the Galaxy universe. We're just confirming that. <laughs> yeah. Especially okay. since the text thing is something that was done in Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm just going to say it. This is part of the Guardians of the Galaxy universe. Okay. I wonder... All franchises are all owned by the same company at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> there is a, a couple moments uh, where Tails gives quick exposition in later in the movie that's just designed just to make sure that there is some sort of a back story of some sort uh, for Knuckles. And he makes it seem as if Knuckles is a very well-known and extremely dangerous person, which is kind of funny when you look at the baseball scene at the end. As like a, uh, not a bounty hunter, but just like like a warrior. He is searching, that's going places, you know what I mean? Um, And then, like, I just kind of want to know what that relationship was with him and those three people. Or was he just, like, happenstanced upon this? You know what I mean? Like, who knows? Try to Uh, third party it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) It's the only way you win. 
but yeah, that was uh yeah, that was that stuff. Um, I don't know if you have anything else you want to talk about for this mushroom planet. Uh, yeah, I just. Really I'm glad like... we didn't dwell here long. Yeah, you know what um, I mean. I, I like that we opened with Robotnik too instead of Sonic again. It kind of just. I think this is. I mean, it still is a Sonic story, obviously, and in in the first one is as well. <laughs> um, but I just like that it started with Robotnik, and it kind of just quickly reintroduces the character, and kind of like quickly for the people who haven't watched the first one. Like I said, I don't know how much the Mushroom Planet would be like a quick like okay whatever if you have not seen the first one, but at least it quickly shows that like okay he's here to kill Sonic, or that's what he wants to do, and he's gonna find a way to get off. He's his marooned, and then this is how and like uh, we kind of theorize like how will you know uh, Knuckles and Eggman meet? And I guess I didn't really I don't know maybe I'm just not smart. I didn't think about like oh he'll just call for help, and then Knuckles will just hear that and come. And then he immediately, like, convinces Knuckles to, like, lead him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was a good scene. What, what's funny is, too, is, like, his narration reminded me a little bit of... So, in the last Weekend album, uh, Jim Carrey narrates on it a couple times and actually has some verses at the end of it, uh, one of the last songs on the album. But it just reminded me of, like, like, oh, this guy's a good narrator. Like, if he doesn't do acting in the future... Uh, I hope he just does like some. If he, I'm sure maybe he's already done it already, but maybe he just be's like a uh, a uh, uh, audiobook reader. I feel like he has a good voice oh, for that. Like I feel like it'd be cool to for him to do that. Interesting. But yeah, uh, we'll move on to our next scene here. Uh, does the same thing as uh, the previous scene where it says instead of the mushroom planet, it says Seattle. Everyone knows where Seattle is. That's somewhere in Washington, uh, <laughs> and it's cutting to there's like an old lady like walking her dog or in a basket or something. Or, and I guess she's walking the dog uh, uh, on like a cart or whatever. And there's a little dog with a little hat looking cute. But then it just quickly cuts to uh, some police cars driving by and there's like a bank truck um, driving as well. And they're getting, it's getting chased. And then it cuts to Sonic. He does some stretches. He doesn't say the lines like he does in the trailer, uh, which right, is something yeah. you, you kind of always forget, but he does some stretches and then he, zips through and he has some quips uh he also makes a shit joke um or like he's gonna say shit but he doesn't uh, it's the second one in the movie and it's only been like 10 minutes uh and uh there's one nitpicky thing here that i want to kind of be critical of and i noticed it the first time but like i kind of just didn't remember it when we were doing our first review was there were some scenes where you can tell it was sped up a little bit or slowed down oh, like the frame rate okay. around it and I think, like, they wanted you to focus on Sonic. But if you look around, there's moments where you can tell it was sped up or slowed down, uh, which is fine. It kind of actually, actually reminded me of, like, old, older movies, like, or late 90s or whatnot, action movies where they try to slow down. It reminded me of Fast and the Furious a little bit, like the first one, where that, like, where they would, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can yeah. tell at moments where, like, okay, clearly they weren't flying around this corner at 100 miles an hour. They were probably doing it more at, like, 40, and they just sped it up a little bit. Uh, and if you pay attention to like signs moving in the wind or whatever it is, like you could tell that it was sped up, but very nitpicky stuff. And I'm okay with it. Cause it's a kid's movie and not supposed to be a realistic, you know, mission impossible or whatever stunts. Like I, it's fine, but just one little thing I wanted to point out there. Um, Cause I think at one point where I do like that, he quickly like, and I, and it, it's funny. I'm thinking about this retroactively now is, it's almost like uh, the Sonic cartoons or Hanna Barbera cartoons, where he gets the drill and just undoes the entire. Yeah, truck. that like, was that was a very Saturday morning cartoon. Like that, that's that's the solution to to the speeding. He could have just ran out and just pushed the front and counter ran. You know, he could have done a bunch of different stuff, but it was went for the take it apart the cartoony thing. And I think that also sets the tone for the rest of this movie that there is some cartoon things that happen. In this, what, and then even in that scene, right before that scene too, the the bombs just all of a sudden just start going off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I just they like just that. Start. Or the fire yeah. later on when they're in the uh, Siberia, there, like the, before they're being thrown in the fire, like it bursts into flames <laughs> a little bit more just to add effect. Yeah. I'm like, I like that shit that they're like, okay, we didn't, we like shit's just gonna happen. That is, I mean, it's there's a talking blue creature, like whatever. Um, but right. yeah, it added more to the cartoon element of Sonic. That you see, obviously, in his cartoons, but also like sometimes see in the games as well. 
But yeah. Um, anything else you want to say about this scene? It's pretty. Quick. I wish this was shorter. This scene, honestly. Um, I just, I just, I maybe it's just because it's this part was in a this was a sizable part of all of the trailers that I feel like okay, I get it. He's just doing this shit. Let's move on. But like, you know, and like this, this is a kids movie. This is meant for children. That's why the, the say bank first, robbers I mean, are very in this that are for adults. But sure, like it's fa- kid first, family first. But they need to get across everything that they do to a child. The bank robbers are like, this will slow them down. Let's throw the <laughs> throw these bomb. Like everything about it was just very much like that's the true. Fuck was the point of this? Was, you know this what I mean? Was, uh, the Batman, right? And the same thing is happening. Or there's a, you know, there's people or uh, robbers stealing this truck. They're just going to grab the bombs and throw it. They're not going to say anything. Right. It's going to be implied. And also, we'll be like, like okay, he, they have bombs. <laughs> like, they're not going to, like, let all the money fly out the back doors, too. Yeah. But it looks cool for, you know. I, I wish it was shorter. I don't really like uh, Sonic the Vigilante like this. I get that it was trying to set up, a, you know, a point. You know, Sonic at the end of the first movie, you know. You know, he saved Green Hill's. He probably feels awesome. He's just going to keep doing that now. You know what I mean? Like, I get that. He needed to be taught, like, a lesson for this movie. But I just thought it was very corny to see uh, him try to be Batman. Um, but then he goes home. He goes to Green Hill, Montana. Shut Green up. Hills, Montana. Shut up to Green Hills. Yeah. Uh, he tries to sneak in home. Uh, he accidentally stole a couple hundred dollars. So, actually, he was the real robber. Um, that's but that's superhero pay. That's how it works. It's like a, it's yeah. like percentage of. Uh, you, you might not notice this, but in all the superhero movies, there's a quick scene you might just not remember where like they're like, oh, that's I'm five percent. I'm five percent for Jesus. saving this. So if I, it's a big take. It's a big take <laughs> if you save a bank. Five yeah. percent. <laughs> you get five percent of wow. the bank. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's how yeah, he goes home. Getting that money. <laughs> tries to go to sleep. Uh, the dog wakes him up. Dog's looking old in this movie. <laughs> might be the same dog probably um maddie is there and then oh yeah you're supposed to go fishing so then he's on the boat and they're fishing together him and tom and i will say this you know granted this is uh the first scene in the movie that isn't actiony that has a human character next to a sonic animated character but it takes me a minute to like really get a sense for the volume and like the placement of sonic in this real world something about this boat scene felt very like i don't know it almost felt like he was too big like i I had to get it readjusted to seeing you know sonic interact with human characters how they did this Um, because there was a couple parts where he feels very much just like a doll that they picked up and put on the boat when he pulls him out of the water you know what i mean um but Obviously, this is most of what we saw in the trailer. Tom gives him a, uh, you know, a speech or whatever. Um, the the awful Oprah joke is still in this movie. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that would have been one to cut from the trailer just to set a tone for a trailer, but they kept it in here anyway. I wish something they funnier. just said something else, like like just said another like another random kind of person like that, or yeah, or just cut uh, in general. But like, could be like, oh. Did Johnny Depp tell, say that? Like, just something really, like, like oh, before can't... he slapped Amber Heard. Yeah, and then, that, yeah, they did do a quick, like, joke about that. Like, it's so fucked up. <laughs> They're so topical. They're like, man, uh, what's his name that played the Flash, huh? <laughs> like, it's just it's that topical. They least somehow edit it right before, like, they... They're like, yeah. they're like telling all the theaters, hey, make sure to update it. Make sure yeah, I threw out my Flash comics because of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, Sonic, he's like, I'm done. DC's canceled, bro. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, hey, they, they're able to reference Batman, so, uh, you know, why not? Um, yeah, I mean, th- like, this is where they try to introduce, like, the type of message that the movie is supposed to try to come across to kids or whatever, Um and obviously to our, our main character, Sonic, uh, you know, you, you have to be responsible for other people. It's about saving other people, not being okay at the end and being like, it's whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then, like, the movie forgets it until, like, the ramifications come back and hit Sonic when Tails is unconscious Dead. or whatever. Dead. Yeah. 
So, like, <laughs> eh, I, I could have used a few more reminder scenes. This movie was, I think, since it was made for children, um, good enough at, like, making sure it says something broadly and direct to the audience and then doing the thing so that it doesn't feel like it was out of the blue to someone that isn't quite heavy well, attention know, there's, span. There's a couple Olive Garden jokes again that would, there's a lot of which those. would make you think about, because when you're there, your family or whatever, like, there you go. There's the family thing sure yeah the family okay. theme is act- so you got to think about it. it's a deeper level <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah i feel like this is, is pretty uh straightforward we get reintroduced to green hills um but they don't really spend much time in there thankfully i would honestly if this movie had did like something similar to the first movie where it's like a lot of sonic going around town i love this place this is my favorite blah 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 shop and i love that this fire hydrant always smells like dog i love this bar i get plastered every night there without telling exactly (laughs) exactly this is the corner where i smoke with all the high schoolers (laughs) (laughs) that'd be so good i hope that's the third one i hope it starts with him that's what shadow would do i want him to be like super (laughs) reckless like just like he's doing a line at this bar he's you know just shit like that he's trying to get the to the closest sensation he'll ever get to having supersonic without having the emeralds is right because he, he doesn't he have does them anymore speed. or whatever he he, he, he <laughs> does pcp <laughs> to try to get that feeling back again that's what the third one's all about oh my god <laughs> all right uh so yeah, we'll kind of segue to our next scene, which is which I like this scene where Sonic does Sonic Air or whatever. He's he has the the fake. Uh, what do you what do you call those things? The scanner, a wand. I he, guess. he has the wand. But I'm saying, what do you call the the big scanner thing? Oh, the big scanner thing. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, probably That's a word. It's called. There's probably a word for it that I don't remember. But I, I like this scene. I thought it was cute and, and and funny, and it shows kind of the dynamic of the family and. Uh, they get sent uh the Wachowskis get sent to the wedding and Sonic quickly cuts to as soon as like as soon as that ring closes up, because that's how he gets them there. Uh, which by the way, he should like under capitalism, if he sold this shit, psh, maybe make him bank. Like you'd be I, th- you'd be like you could charge anything and people would pay like oh, you want to get to Seattle right now? One billion dollars. Okay. Jeff Bay is like, I wanna get there right now. <laughs> This is uh here's a, here's an issue or a question. How many rings did he have because he loses them all in Siberia? FYI. Does he lose That's why all of Tails them? has to, he drops his bag of rings in Siberia. Every single one though. They all go you down think he the doesn't drain. have a bank. I don't know. Hey, who knows? They'll probably figure out something for the third one, right? They don't want to just not have those. That's why Tails has to take the plane and save them when that's the Sonic like and Knuckles is there. But in any case, I was thinking about this the first time through. I'm like, man, how many rings does he have left? Are they you he know, wastes consumable? One going to get Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Bro, you could just run to the store. That's he's got to save time. You know, he's only got 48 <laughs> hours. I thought about that. I'm like, man, how uh, how much is a, a plane uh, you know, round trip to to Seattle? Or not Seattle, Hawaii costs compared to what I, he thinks this. Even ring if you costs. low budgeted it, like you go in Frontier, you know, and you're not doing first class or anything, you're not even paying for a bag. You're probably st- from from where they're at, Montana, especially, <laughs> which has like no flights. You're probably gonna have to drive to Billings there, Billings, Montana. But even if, let's say, I would probably six hundred, eight hundred dollars per ticket. So yeah, like yeah. you could just be like, I'll two thousand dollars, you'll get there right now. There's no, and you have no jet lag. <laughs> That's true. Well, he has a ring lag. <laughs> you still will get jet lag because the time zone's different. So you're naturally well, going to go to sleep at a different time. I guess and you'll have to be, compensate. Like, it would be like, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily jet lag, but like, yeah, the, the, there's still be that adjustment in time. But yeah, um, but they're only there for two nights, so whatever. Yeah, two nights. Uh, two nights there. Um, but yeah, they had that party at home. Uh. And he just does a lot of crazy, cool, goofy Sonic shit. And they, after watching the 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 commentary version, the director's commentary version of the first one, I know that like they said they want to make an effort of giving them props and stuff, like a cartoon almost. Uh, and they do that in this scene a lot. He does he does yeah. some skateboarding, 
Not as cool as Vin Diesel skateboarding and Triple X Return of Xander Cage. It's true. But there's some cool scenes with the, with him doing the skateboard. I like uh, he did- gelled up his hair and did different hairstyles. And I just want to know how many people were off a frame waiting to jump to grab the dog in case it tried to lick the hair gel out of its own hair. <laughs> well, just waiting to be like, all right, hold on. If he starts to turn his head, I wonder if they get gelled him. his hair or put like a prop hair and then stuck it to his top of his head. They probably use some sort of edible just jelly. Yeah. Honestly. But uh trying to put a wig on a dog would be tough. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, they put a they put a bald cap on Jim Carrey. He has hair, you know. So, like, that's like an anti-wig, I guess. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, like, they, you can you can have Jim Carrey sit in front of makeup for an hour and a half to make that look fine. But, like, try to get a dog to do that. Yeah. Bro's got to pee at least either, four either times. Put, they either put something on his head to make it look like it has his hair sticking up. But, um, yeah, this is a cute scene. Scenes, I guess you can even count it because there's, like, different little actions that happen throughout the day when he's there. Also, I don't just don't know why he gets the lawnmower and decides to just absolutely wreck the place. <laughs> right that that's like disrespectful like i'm <laughs> trashing your house as opposed to getting carried I don't away give a shit that you can clean it it's just like why dude like look i don't know if you dude, pay attention to the carpet uh in like the scene like right before that and right after that it is so gross they <laughs> they act in real life filming that they destroyed that's that, that house <laughs> you know what i mean they're never going back to that set again so they're oh like, my <laughs> god but yeah bring the lawnmower in a he how did he get it in <laughs> he disassembled and disassembled fuck dude dude needs to like get a job <laughs> <laughs> that's what he can do you know uh Pick but then yeah the, like the surplus that, labor value oh that he can god. he can put out <laughs> jesus he should work in sonic, sonic is hanging around a home depot <laughs> But yeah, uh, oh yeah, Tom meets Randall, which is cool. Like it starts off with him, and they like make a point that like yeah, he's right. hot. It's like cool. Like we're all acknowledging. We don't need it. Yeah, like yeah. You, we're just gonna say it. We're just gonna say it. We're all thinking it. He comes up. Yeah, and like, he immediately busts we... Tom's balls about like you kept my wife kind of like a hostage, pretty much tied her up. Um, and then he quickly like, and this kind of it's funny now knowing that he's a agent or whatever that this like makes so much more sense like. He probably got some sort of dossier on her. <laughs> yeah, like he's, he's just a, repeating facts he read. Yeah, like, it, and he really doesn't, like, he's supposed to, like, he's in that, obviously we find out he's in a conundrum of, like, he does actually love her, but it's also his job to, like, infiltrate and wait for this exact moment to happen. Oh, this movie's all about moments. That's another theme. Um, and it's, it's, like, knowing that, it makes, it makes the joke a little bit more funnier to me, where it's just, like, he's, like, oh, I actually don't give a shit what she thinks in a way like because he's i'm just knowing using information to like hit you yeah question for you Mm -hmm. now not a single one of those people at the wedding knew that sonic was going to show up (laughs) so number one as a lot of security like not security detail but like agents to put there in case but also like my dude was setting up for the long haul he had no idea how long he was going to be married married to this woman <laughs> in case, you know, they beat Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, that's deep undercover. He got lucky. <laughs> Tom meets him at the wedding, which means he hasn't been doing this this long. <laughs> you know, he got this guy got lucky that Sonic busted into the life and you know, meeting Sonic at, at the wedding, essentially. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, that is that is, makes it a little bit more funnier too. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, he like this could have been on going no on idea forever. <laughs> yeah. Also, it makes me think: Do other people know about her? Like, like how does she describe that story? Because like, obviously, she tells people. But how, I want to know, like, yeah. it, like, yeah, they brought in this blue alien, and they're like, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Well, it's obviously like <laughs> this is what I, I find. That's what interesting. I love about these kind of like these situations and these kind of movies. Obviously, don't take themselves seriously. I just like the implication yeah. that there could be a whole other storyline that you could, if you ever wanted to do a a short, you on, could make it. You yeah, could yeah, make yeah. it because it's just yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> um, the first movie ends in a comical way of like 
the U.S. government man gives them an Olive Garden gift card as a as a, an apology for like having shit happen to them or what? Like because Jim Carrey was funded by the government essentially, or something like Dr. that. Dr. Robotnik was funded by the government, right? And then there's the joke of like, you haven't seen him, have you? Like about Sonic, and they're like, no. And he kind of leaks through the door, and they close it. He still and like that movie trust. set up is yeah. like, well, that movie, I, I, that first movie sets up like. Ah, oh, it's funny. Like they're it's goofy, and I think they decide, you know, we can just use that. And like, no, he was really mistrusting. And like, yeah, <laughs> they, like it makes it look like, yeah, that gets gone because, like, they're dumb and it's not important. But yeah, no, like they didn't do anything to protect themselves about Sonic. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. They didn't do anything. The dude still goes around town. He's not like an invisible creature. Anyone in town knows that he's there still. You know what I mean? It's easy to find him. He's Maybe also they just in the newspaper. That, uh... He literally was like saving people in the newspaper. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> so he's yeah, not yeah, really yeah. hiding. <laughs> Unlike, yeah, it, like it's like Superman and uh, Zack Snyder's like he's he hides for like he, that's what he was supposed to be doing. So like you're supposed to be doing that. You're supposed to be small villain it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, too, like I don't like necessarily think. And actually, the Marvel movie says, I don't think a single Marvel character movie, Marvel movie character besides Spider-Man, has had a secret identity. Yeah, no one gets <laughs> Like, they're shit. all, they're all just like... like celebrities. Yeah, right. Um, so I guess I'll take it a little bit back, because I was going to say, I don't really like the fact that every single one of these things, they have to keep it a secret. Like, Sonic the Hedgehog is fucking Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> like, you can't wear, you can't put sunglasses on him and have him be called sonic not the hedgehog you know what i mean of course yeah. in that first movie they put a cowboy hat on him and said he has skin condition so whatever <laughs> that's what i'm saying i like that it's cartoony it doesn't take itself seriously yeah. it, it, there's no lot like there's not really a true like logic you know it's not black and white it's just like yeah they wear a disguise even at the when they go to siberia uh they you know they don't they people just think they're weird people and not yeah yeah a, a fox yeah. and hedgehog supposedly <laughs> Which I also One like. Of them has a blue which face. Which I also like that they're not from this planet, but that they know what like hedgehogs and foxes are. True. Or that Knuckles um, knows what Knuckles are, are, and that his name is based off a part of your body. True. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I also, looking at Knuckles' uh, gloves, they are kind of leathery, like yeah, a I, like, boxing glove. I really glove. love the look of all. Their, and like, Sonics gloves. are like uh, fuzzy. Um, but then, yeah, uh, Sonic is partying at home. And the lights go out, uh, and then all of a sudden we're in creepy, spooky camera mode. Uh, Sonic makes a joke when the TV goes static of, we didn't order a porch poltergeist, but I really wanted him to make a reference to the ring yes, instead. Yes, yes, yes. I was thinking the same. Like, wait, like every time like it happened, I was like, this is a perfect opportunity for the ring to open up. Like, maybe, like, the ring from Eggman or something, or Knuckles opens up. You know what I mean? And And... That's what Sonic says. He's like, oh, it's like that one movie I stayed up to watch the other night or whatever. Like, It's just like that movie The Ring because then kids would just think it's a joke about the fact that there's rings and adults would get it. You know yeah. what I mean? That it's about that movie. Or he movie. says the Japanese version. It's Ringu. <laughs> or whatever yeah. you pronounce it. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Which is the better version. Um, But then, yeah, Robotnik is back. Uh, He's honestly creepy and scary in this point. And then uh, Sonic goes to just punch him, and then here comes Knuckles. Sonic and Knuckles clash. Um, they fight each other a little bit, but like it's Sonic has no much. idea what's it's going not, on. It's not too much yeah. fight. Sonic, I think, and if then, anything, uh, is overconfident in this scene where he kind of just quickly charges at him, and like Knuckles just yeah. make like quickly. And then Knuckles does the meme that he's I've seen before, where the the one girl, the big girl, is holding the small girl from like a porn video against the wall. Have you seen that? Oh, name? okay. Yeah, uh, it's, every sure. Time, I'm, that's where my brain unfortunately goes every time. Every time you, hey, you can go he, there. That's fine. When, when Knuckles grabs him by the throat and puts him up to the tree, I'm just like, <laughs> same um, energy. <laughs> I also forgot too. When Sonic is starting his party at home, Tails shows up, does the end credit scene, zips around and tries to hide. Although uh, I feel like he could have just zipped straight up and just stayed in the sky and did it. No one would have seen him. It's Montana, but. Tails is smarter than you, I am. That's how UFO sightings happen, though. Yo, what that's is that? True. What is that in the sky? Yo, what the fuck? But uh, <laughs> you know, Sonic or Sonic and Knuckles are outside fighting a bit, and 
looks like Knuckles is about to win, and then Tails hits him with a car. Which is kind of crazy. Tails, think of. And then Tails' line is, I'm on your side, get in. <laughs> Sonic just sees the third other creature that isn't a human on this planet. is like, okay. <laughs> in the last 45 <laughs> seconds, in. like, this is yeah. uh, overwhelming <laughs> for Sonic. Um but uh but yeah they're driving in the car a bunch um tails gives the quick exposition that uh, knuckles is the last echidna warrior the last of his kind and uh he's after the master emerald um and he must think that you know about it and i'm here to warn you about it it's already happening i have two tails yeah and that's it yeah it just it's funny um there was a bit of knuckles doing a we talked about the the lack of glide that he does, but watching this again now, there's a couple moments where he does kind of like an elongated power jump. Yeah. Like a horizontal power it's jump. Like he's I doing think the that's long jump in track. Kind of <laughs> kind of what uh kind of probably the probably kind of kind of probably probably kind of the thing. <laughs> um <laughs> I was like, how long are you going to uh, do that? <laughs> do that? <laughs> until I remember to keep talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, I mean, I like this stuff a bunch. Um, yeah. And then uh, he, he, yeah. they, the, the cop car that they stole uh, f- flies off a cliff, and Tails is able to, with Sonic, run away. Knuckles, which I did like, he does the, he does the, uses the, the pointy th- end on his, on his glove and sticks to the wall. Yeah, and he's climbing, climbing. His way, climbing his way up. Um, I want to see him digging in the wall and find a couple of rings. Something, yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the sound he makes in Sonic Adventure Two when he digs. Yeah, and then it just sounds like a eight bit uh, digging noise while he's doing it. Um, but I also like that once again that Robotnik just comes rolling on that same tractor that Sonic used to destroy. Oh yeah, that was probably the same actual. Tractor. IRL tractor. <laughs> and I love that they kept the color scheme. It's a red and black tractor. That's true. That's how they saved that budget. They don't buy two tractors. <laughs> They're like, how are we going to get Robotnik there? Hey, Jim Carrey, the tractor is still on set. Take it. They I just like to that he drive just kicks multiple it. miles. Even though I, I don't think a tractor would make it that far. <laughs> you need, like, there's no way that has uh, that much gas. They, went, they were driving so. like 50, Fair. 50, 60 miles an hour. Fair. And like through hills and stuff, so but it's fine. Yeah, Whatever, yeah, yeah. it's funny. Um, but yeah, uh, they have their dialogue, so that distrust. But then Eggman convinces Knuckles. Knuckles breaks his knuckles. Then uh, <laughs> they call the giant. Well, this is after they call the the satellite uh, thing, which he gets kind of a uh, r- new suit, but it's a little bit different, I think, from last time. And it's fire. Um, we also did. I don't think we mentioned before, but they had the. The new uh, drones, but they were based off the the, the bees, the bees, the wasps. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 those are cool. I'm glad they had those in there. Yeah. Um. Again, I like the the knuckles. Oh, this is stairs line. Um, and I like that. Uh, you know, he, Eggman just overhears when they were fighting in the backyard about the ultimate power, and he's like, "Okay, this is actually the new goal." Now, I just wanted to kill Sonic, but like. Now there's a second thing, <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and it'll still help me kill Sonic. Um, yeah. Um, although, who knows, if, like, if he didn't hear that and uh, Knuckles kill Sonic right away or whatever, Jim Carrey, or, Jesus, I just call Jim him, Carrey keep calling him Jim Carrey, real life. <laughs> Robotnik uh, Eggman would um, most likely try to trick Knuckles into just being captured so he could, ex- you know, take his power to or whatever, experiment in some fashion. I um, won't let you take my power. Uh, Robotnik and Knuckles do that second deal. Um, but I think it's either right after this or right before this. Um, we get to the garage, Wade's garage. No, this is, yeah, this is right after this, directly after. I think it cuts to that garage. Scene. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then, yeah, uh, the map just decides to unveil <laughs> that it has the Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, you're my only hope type of message. Um, yeah. then, then the map of the stars or whatever changes to a map of earth and where they need to go. Um, I like tails a lot in this movie. I feel like the second time around I've, I've tails is very yeah. cute. Tails. Um, is, 
once again that and then we'll get to it too that scene late like that i had like i said i was getting a little emotional for second time I'm like yep i think and i realize it's because they the animation uh with with her voice is just so good and i think that it just hits it just hits me in the core and plus tails is just very small there's like in the in the siberia scene someone holds tails up and they're basically they have their hands around his tum- stomach and their fingers can practically touch like that's how small tails is um but then yeah tails is like i'm not going with you i'm just here to warn you and also i'm i'm basically a psychophant of you <laughs> uh, and i want to give a shout out cuz we we forgot her name last time but it's Colleen O Shaga, I can't still it's pronounce her last Colleen name. Shazani. Shazani, but she did. I yeah, believe she was. She does all the tales yeah. in the video games for people who maybe just watch the movie. Um, all the tales. She does all the tales. Um, but yeah, she kills it. I think in this movie, I think she's very. I hope this leads to like more like voice acting work in terms of like these Hollywood movies for her because I don't know if this is her first one or what in terms of movies. So. Yeah. Um, and I also wonder now too if um and we did an episode uh on the Sonic movie show here, one of our more recent ones where we give a Hollywood actor for every single Sonic character from the games. Um and I wonder if for minor characters they might just grab the voice actor. You know. We talked last episode, my assumptive theory of why she is in the role is because they didn't expect to make this movie and they were making just a one sentence line in the post credits teaser of the first one. So they're like, yeah, we'll just get her. It was probably very cheap to do that. And then they feel obligated to just make her tales. But I also could also see too, and I want to see a director's commentary of this movie or interviews. Cause I don't know how easy that voice is to do. That might be a very hard voice to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? They might've tried to get someone and they just couldn't. It's very yeah, it's and they very, said, well, uh, it's probably easier and cheaper to grab the the video game voice actress that voices Sonic or voices Tails. But yeah, but I think yeah, this we, is her first movie because I'm just looking at her, at her IMDb and she's done obviously a lot of video games, cartoons. She's okay. done like you know Avengers short movies, like the cartoon movies and stuff, Digimon. All sure, that. but yeah, I think uh, Digimon. Obviously, if you don't count Sonic the Hedgehog at, at end credit scene. Um, yeah, this is her first movie, so first Hollywood yeah. movie. Um, yeah, and then out, then uh, yeah, the Robotnik and Knuckles thing happens, but um, before Knuckles climbs up to talk with them, uh, Robotnik messages um, uh, Agent Stone, and Agent Stone, we see the Mean Bean Coffee Company. Uh, he kicks everyone out activates the thing when the the giant egg satellite pod comes down gives him his new suit then there is the the deal that he that robotic makes with uh knuckles um but yeah i this guy doesn't get enough credit because he's not in this movie enough um but agent stone i mean the, the end of the movie just shows that he's obviously gonna be in the next one he is you know he's undercover yeah. in and his gun. name is uh lee Majib Majdub. M A J D O U B. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, uh, so apologies. But yeah, he we love him. I think last time we talked about him in, the, in our last episode, last review of this, um, uh, where we just feel like he needs more scenes, and he's great with Jim Carrey. But like, I hope this like leads him to more roles uh, and whatnot. So yeah. yeah, like this. What I will say about this movie, um, him at the very end of this movie, where he is in a gun soldier outfit and he pulls the thing down showing that he has agency (laughs) you know what i mean and obviously i mentioned this uh last time too either robotnik built this coffee shop before the events of the first movie or agent stone did at the very least agent stone assembled it you know what i mean he might not have created any of it but he assembled it you know what i mean Um, and he read the manual in that giant machine, like while yes. that shit is happening that he didn't yes. actually eventually, like he does learn, like he's not yeah. like a, just a playing that dumb character. Cause there's characters, right. in which this, they could have easily had done. And they have other characters in this, in these movies that, um, are just characters that like the, they are the punching bag and like, he's a punching bag, but like he does have a little bit more agency, like you said. And yeah, he's an interesting character. And the reason why I say that is that ending a uh, part is a big tell for me. Um, 
that plus obviously the entire like side plot of the wedding that really reinforces that no these characters are not gone they are in the sequel just like sonic is and the tails and the knuckles um I guarantee every single one of these actors will be in Sonic 3, whatever they call that movie. I think um, everyone... I bet they will all be in it. I think Tico Because Sumter, it just feels like... James Marston... I James think... Marston, by the way, has top building billing in this movie in the credits. Yeah. Did I'm saying that? them two... I, I say them two are going to be in it for sure. I don't know if, like, the other characters will besides Agent Stone. Like, those... I think the main three there, like, the whole wedding... That whole thing, I think that's. You a, think that was like uh, okay, we're closing. Yeah, this maybe this loop. maybe they'll have, they'll have like a scene again in the third one, but it'll be like a one-off. Th- I don't think they're going to be like. It depends on how much they want to do, but I the 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 impression I got was like, none of these people are dead, none of these people are written off. They're all here in the sequel, in in, in such a bigish way. Um, there really isn't just the Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, CG fest. I really do see this as like almost like, you know, a movie family type of of thing where like, yes, you know, maybe it's just because I saw the set photo or not set photos, the red blue carpet, I think they called it, you know, photos or whatever. But like, this is like the movie crew, the movie. That is true. You know, people. And they are the movie that's that's going and going and going. Um, I seeing Agent Stone at the end. And not just his last scene being him unconscious in the robot was the big tell for me of like, okay, yeah, no, they are going to continue to have all of these people in the next movie. And I feel like that's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, I know that's we'll how you probably, avoid just, I don't know if we'll do it this episode, but an episode in the future, I know we'll do kind of like a predictions of what Sonic three will be yeah, about. I have ideas. And I, have I ideas. think agent stone will be a, actually, I hope, and I actually hope that he has a big role in what happens. He, 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 He's in a position at the end of this movie to be a big player if they're going to do the Shadow the Hedgehog stuff. Um, spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, uh, yeah, so after that, we go to Siberia. Um, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, we get the volleyball scene first. Um, Which is, I liked we, better the second time for some reason. I don't know. I just find, same. It, I find it funnier. Like, I'm like, this is... Maybe it's because... This is for, like, the older folks. This is for the mom and dad in the audience. You know, I feel like... Because, yeah. like, like, the kids will find it generally funny that he's getting hit with ball. But, like, I think it's just, like, meanwhile, while this... I don't want to say kid stuff, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's that... This movie has, like, a... This is one thing we were critical about. I think we thought that it was kind of... There's moments where it jumped too much or... Maybe mm-hmm. the pacing was weird, and I think I still agree with that, but I feel like I'm going to be less critical of it, where, like, after seeing it a second time, in the whole, like, subplot with the wedding and whatnot, I feel like they per- like I feel like they wanted that to be, like, almost a completely separate thing, just for, like, the adults and for the parents who, like, cause we've all gone to weddings, maybe something crazy happens, and maybe not yeah, obviously like-, like this, but, like, Bridezilla... Like everyone's that's happened to I think most people in some context or like it's just super stressful. I'm supposed to be one of the groomsmen, yeah. but like my suit this was dude's, wrinkled this, or something. Yeah, like this, this dude's friends, they are just too much of a frat house. It's, I just don't want to <laughs> be here. Yeah, but they do use the scene to set up um, a bit of uh, you know, I want to say a a, a a issue or a question Tom has, but uh, just to show like oh like I want sonic to have this with friends he doesn't have any friends muscles he has (laughs) us yeah muscles and then he quickly Um, is like stop (laughs) like (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. um but james got the guns though i think we yeah he he does he does we don't sleep he didn't take his shirt off he didn't take his shirt off but like he he Um, he flex like that that's from cyclops days right there i don't think so (laughs) those are a long time ago my friend i'm saying he's keeping them though that's what i'm saying he he worked out maybe maybe cyclops and then yeah we always forget that he's Cyclops. It's crazy to me. Like at, at this point, I think of him as Tom Wachowski. <laughs> I'm the Sonic movies will probably make more money than all of those X Men movies did. Um, but yeah, no, they use this scene to to show like, oh man, it wouldn't be great if Sonic had friends. And then uh, yeah, then we cut to uh, yes to Siberia. Cool if Sonic was in a frat. <laughs> oh my god, Sonic goes to college. <laughs> Dude, he's in uh, Alpha Gamma Omega <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Alpha Gamer. Um, yeah, we're in Siberia. They're lost. Uh, they used the, the cut of nice warm uh, weather to harsh cold 
reality. Um, they're when they go into a blizzard, they go into this inn restaurant. I don't even know what the fuck this was. I think it's Who like a, it's, it's like a, it's like a place that people come for. Like I know that in some places in Europe, like you can hike along like the Alps and stuff, and there's like places like this where like you can stay for a night. Or if the weather gets bad and you can't make it down, because you're hiking, you know, twenty miles up into a mountain, like there's yeah. these kind of places. So I think it's just kind of like that, where it's like a people just kind of live, not live. The people who work there probably like live in that general area, and then just you know, yeah. Um, it's a cute scene. Uh, I like seeing Sonic and Tails in the little tiny suits, snow suits or whatever. The gear, and really, it's the goggles or the the visors whatever you would call it the goggles yeah the, that sell it for the me snowboarding face goggles, masks whatever yeah 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 um then we get a dance off and i liked the dance off less the second time around than the first time and i just think it goes on way too long yes i also don't like the bruno and mars song i get that but like it just <laughs> felt like it went on way too long but this is for the kids this is for this the is kids. for the kids this is a kids movie the kids liked seeing sonic and tails dance they did in my my showings. Um, also, I noticed the second time around that the uh, that one dude had a tattoo of himself <laughs> on his Which chest. Which I'm like, there's like a no, whole other like question I have with that. I'm just like, this guy really believes in himself. Yeah, like he's just like very <laughs> self centered. I, I just thought that was a funny little like. Once again, like they do a good job of trying to throw in some hum- humor that I feel like could hit all audiences. Because like that, yeah, seeing it the second time, I'm like. Like I, there was a lady sitting next to me, probably in like her forties or whatever, and she. And as soon as he took his shirt off, she's like, "Oh boy, okay." <laughs> like she was like, "We're not expecting this man to take himself so seriously." And then it turned into dancing. Then they're like, "Oh, it's a dance, okay." And like, because he thought they're gonna fight or like he's gonna pull out a knife or some <laughs> shit because he looks like that. Sonic's kind of... gonna spin dash this dude into in half. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like Mortal Kombat or some shit. Yeah, um, it's just yeah. right into his chest and the guy splits yeah, open. Yeah, his guts go everywhere. Just tons of blood. <laughs> the the blue uh, cyclone spinning just gets turned purplish. <laughs> all of the, Sonic's all like of the gore. The work is done, and he's just covered in like just mush human mush you know like uh when you're eating spaghetti you stick the fork and you spin it <laughs> yeah. and it takes the yeah, thing that's, that's his intestines yeah yeah it's all it's on his head <laughs> um yeah i just didn't really care for the dance up but then we get the cute scene where tails asks sonic if uh you know he considers them friends and uh you know it's cute um yeah that's my one of my favorite scenes in this movie like i said it hit me yeah. hit me in the feelings and uh i think it's like i said i think it's just because of colleen's great voice acting with the great uh, animation, because like Tails' animation sure. is just so like a plus. Like, yeah. I love when Tails like when after Tails says something like that, Tails thinks is exciting. Tails just kind of has like his mouth open and it's just like, yeah, like I just said something really great, and it's like overly <laughs> pos- positive and that you just can't hate. You just can't hate. Yeah, yeah. He's also like six. <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure, so it works out. <laughs> So yeah, where do we we go from there to Yeah, they just like cut like the next morning the old lady's like hugging Sonic and it just doesn't Which cut. I love that. Yeah. Just, we have a situation and then that's it. They they just don't cut need, from that. They don't need that yeah. anymore. I love it. Yeah. And they they're flying, which I feel like would be even more cold than the blizzard maybe up up in that. They're they're furry. <laughs> they're furry, they're fine. Uh yeah, they fly to where they think the or where their radar thing says one of the well, I think they're they think the master emeralds there, but it's going to wind up being a key or a compass, um, which was more like a key than anything uh, than a compass. I just don't know how the compass. Yeah, it pointed. ended up being a key. It didn't point anywhere. <laughs> Maybe this is a vibe. You just know. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, they get there. There's an owl statue. Sonic jokes about that, or Sonic or Sonic jokes about there being an owl like door, and then there's an owl statue. They get the key, and then of course Knuckles and Eggman ambush him unsuccessfully kind of because sonic gets away but then i like that in this movie they make eggman much more powerful though like they feel like he kind of learned from his fails like he knows he can't he can't uh just shoot sonic because sonic can move so quick but i feel like he just like we have so many different shit going on like the chances of him getting hit are much higher now even though sonic mocks it again when he goes through all the lasers and stuff but like tails can't do that and that's what will hurt Sonic's chances of being a hero right. is that 
Tails gets it, which he does. Um, eventually, you know, do a cool snowboarding scene, um, reference to at, uh, one of the games and Sonic Adventure, I believe, right? The whole snowboarding. Yeah, scene. yeah. I mean, um, they didn't do it in the the movie movie. But the credits, when they kind of recreate the movie for the snowboarding, uh, Sonic jumps off an orange ramp, which is 100% what um, uh, Ice Peak, I think that's what it was There's called. There's a lot more fun Sonic levels Adventure. in that game. Just, 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 just <laughs> snowboarding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, snowboarding is always cool in games. Um, but yeah, uh, they get down, the Sonic and Knuckles kind of talk, and there's that brief moment where like maybe they're going to you know, realize that they're chill and or at least like they don't mean to really hurt each other. They kind of just know their upbringing a little bit, but then Eggman quickly, you know, stops that from happening, kills quote unquote tails. Even Sonic says, oh. like, I let him die basically yeah. <laughs> later on. Um, but yeah, then, then uh, we get the fun scene of Sonic trying to get back, just get away. Cause there's an avalanche coming and he's calling, yeah, yeah. uh, you know, calling uh, Tom there to be like, hey, I need you to use that ring I gave you. And, of course, the ring he switched out, which I love that they kind of foreshadowed later in the movie, earlier in the movie. Um, Yeah, yeah. And Tom punches, uh, what's his name, the husband? Randall. Randall. uh, And throws the ring, and then, of course, they all come in, and it quickly escalates. We get the one of my else, one of my favorite scenes, like, oh, everyone's an FBI agent or gun agent. Yeah, yeah. Including the husband and the priests. And then we think maybe is the kid an agent as well. I loved that part. Uh, the kid's like, what? <laughs> uh, real quick. Um, I liked the plane flying over. That was the, you know, Rachel and Randall forever. Um, because <laughs> a, it, it, it had the plane. That's what tails uses. So they made sure it was in the movie beforehand. I would have loved to, when it comes back again, the second time after, you know, when they're reconvening their love or whatever. Um, if uh, he's like, my name is not even Randall though. <laughs> There's something, my name, my, <laughs> yeah, my yeah. name is, my name is, it's like, I don't know, pick a, a, a weird name. Yeah, and then maybe it makes goofy. her like, Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> or Can something you just be like Randall that. or something like yeah, that? Yeah. yeah. I would also yeah. love, they took it a step further. They have that sign. He has that banner. Oh yeah. The, the, entire the Randall, movie. the Randall thing falls down and it says Morbius or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh no i love it the rest of the movie that plane has it on there still i think that would have been a funny touch <laughs> like it's like while they're fighting eggman and shit it still says that would have been funny that would have been funny <laughs> they're like we didn't bother taking this shit off it's just gonna be you get an aerial shot of it circling around the death egg robot and it just says rachel <laughs> and randall for forever it. yeah i would love that missed opportunity maybe um but yeah uh they have uh Sonic get put in a cage. Tom is handcuffed away, but not his wife. Luckily, I think they kind of just like, oh, he's the main culprit behind all this. Thankfully, because uh, um, I'm just gonna put it this yeah. way though: every single person that was there was a gun agent, except for Tom, Maddie, uh, Rachel, and perhaps people people Rachel knew ahead of time, which were her bridesmaids and her own daughter. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, like, all of those people that were gun agents left. So they just left two people by themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why not escort them somewhere? <laughs> it was very weird that uh, but, that they just let them be, but whatever. Yeah, and then they use Tails' gadgets, and they go and save the day. There's some rom-com kind of energy throughout the next ten for minutes. For sure. Which we think could have been cut a little shorter, but it's okay. Once again, I think this moment's for the the moms and the dads who like don't really give a shit about Sonic the Hedgehog as much. Um, so yeah, they they save the day. Uh, we get our reunion. We get both reunions. Honestly, <laughs> we get the Wachowski family being reunited, and then we have uh, you know uh, them be realizing that they're still together. Uh, oh, the ge- the not is not a general, right? He's like a He's like the head of everything, I guess. Well, now he's a head of Gun, the um, Guardians. United. It's not Guardians of United Nations. It's Guardians. Uh, Universal. And it's not the word na- something. It's something like very close to saying United Nations, but not saying United Nations. Um, but regardless, yeah, Olive Garden guy is uh, 
a major player in Gun. And they needed Sonic. Agents of Gun, I'm telling you, we need to make that TV show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, then we... Once uh, Sonic gets out of the cage, Sonic realizes real quick that he needs to go save the day because a giant laser pops up because pre... Like, right, kind of jump a little all over the place, but uh, Knuckles and Eggman get to the spot. They use the compass. They open the fun underwater touch about that compass it has seven it has the seven chaos emeralds kind of colors as little blips in them yeah. which the first time around i'm like is that supposed to be like representing the chaos emeralds maybe but it's moving spin it too fast i can't tell second time around could definitely tell those were seven colors of the chaos emeralds yeah um so yeah they open up the well, they don't really show it yet but they see the they show the water kind of uh being separated like uh was that moses moses yeah. yeah uh let my people go yeah and then uh that's what he said that's what sonic said as well when he saw the laser and he said like he's the only one who can save it because he's the only one who can get there quick enough uh and right right when he leaves tails like wait i'm up <laughs> i know it's his suit is when tom shouts sonic that's wakes tails up so in the entire like Sonic versus Knuckles thing in the temple, Sonic thinks Tails is probably still dead. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, Sonic tries but... to go across the water there, and yeah, yeah he hits some. Uh, I was gonna say like there should be a tsunami is probably happening, but <laughs> obviously they're not gonna do that. But like they f- begin to show the water very flat and calm, and then it's like, wait, no, you're crossing the ocean. Like that's and, impossible. And a laser that is separating earth right <laughs> it, it, it is probably causing some big waves uh to come but yeah he doesn't uh and i like that they kind of he he doesn't really successfully do it uh like get across uh easily because earlier he couldn't swim and a couple days later he um you know he's he he goes on the flat surface but then he hits that big wave he tries to jump over it and he kind of just fumbles. Yeah. And it cuts him. Luckily, he's on that beach, though, where that, that thing is. Um, or where the for- fortress, whatever you want to call it, is. Ancient ruins. Uh, yeah. Um, I need to look up. Um, someone was saying that it reminded them of Hidden Palace Zone, which was uh, a cut level from Sonic 2 mm. that you can, like, debug menu to get into some, like, assets of it. Maybe that is, maybe it's not. It also just looks like any of the ziggurats um, type stuff from Sonic Adventure where the Master Emerald was, you know. Like, you know, you played that game, just the pyramid. Um, yeah. When they're, when they're stepped, it's called a ziggurat, I learned. Um, but, yeah, that's in the middle of the ocean. Sonic thankfully wakes up on shore. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, in a weird way, that's kind of like uh, respawning in a game. I kind of felt like that it had that kind of... Because the way it turned to black and then it just... It shows him on the shore, almost like, you know, he lost a life or something there. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. I will. I one thing I noticed, and we talked about it earlier at the beginning of the the movie with maybe they use miniatures with animation. I think when they did the top down shots, like the or more like a bird eye view of that labyrinth section, mm-hmm. I think that's a I think that's a model that they like. I can see that CGI'd a little bit up. Especially when he goes down and like the way that it just it looked too it looked so good. So if it was, it looked great. And I just I just wasn't sure if it was or not. But uh, yeah, because those, those um, crystals Eggman that they were running and, by and too. I know that it seemed like they built a separate sense for them to run through, or for yeah. Egg, or for Jim Carrey to run through. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just I just thought I just really loved the the design of the labyrinth. And stuff. Yeah, it looked cool. It looked very intricate and deep, but in ways that don't matter for the sake of the time we spend in this movie <laughs> dedicated yeah. to this, you know, they could, they just get there. That's all that matters. Um, but yeah, you know, yeah. Eggman and knuckles are going through there. There's a trap like every seven seconds, except for the punchline of it, not actually being like that for one last time. Um, and then knuckles just smashes a wall and they, they just get in anyway. And then I love to like, they're, they're getting to the steps and then they hear above them sonic just getting the shit kicked out of him bumping into everything and in there during that uh this the cacophony of sounds you hear above uh there is a i lost my rings sound effect 
<laughs> which oh, happens very did. briefly. Yeah. I'm like, that's awesome because we've all played a Sonic game where like for your it's it's a tough area maybe it's marble zone from sonic one or something like that and for a little bit you're just being juggled into losing your rings and then thankfully collecting a few more and then just getting hit again and you're just trying to make it through that was sounds like like yeah you just tried to force your way through marble zone <laughs> and you just barely made it you crashed down you lost all your rings but two there was it's another all you part need. where i heard like another sound effect from the game that was of a ring, like a ring up or something or collecting a ring. I don't remember where it was, but it was towards the end of the movie, but it wasn't there. But uh, if we ever see it a third time anytime soon, um, I'll try to remember what part it was. But there was a couple instances in this movie where they used some of the game sound effects, I think, in a funny way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, then it's time for Sonic and Knuckles to face off. Uh, One last time. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't know that. They could fight again in the, in the future movies if they really feel like it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't really – they it, just fight. This is a good fight scene, and it obviously uh, – we I mentioned this last time, too, in the other episode, that uh, I wasn't sure how they are going to fight. And they showed a little bit in the trailers, but wasn't sure how elaborate it was going to be. And I just really love when he – hits knuckles down into that pit that was almost like a dragon ball z you know was, the more i thought about it more kind I, of yeah like where they're like just getting blasted by beams and getting hit into the the ground over and over and somehow the ground is just breaking below them because there's yeah, so yeah, much yeah. energy uh yeah that was cool and then and i also like when knuckles was once again almost like dragon ball z or like anime fighting where he's like punching like 500 yep, punches yep. a second and like Sonic's just barely getting out of the way while mocking him a little bit and then but knuckles yeah. does like show that he's actually, I think, the better fighter. And I'm glad oh, for sure. they do because he keeps saying he is and Sonic keeps getting away. But I like that, like, no, Sonic doesn't get away here. Like, he was clearly about to get beat, uh, yeah, killed, really, because I think Knuckles is about to drop that rock on him and crush his brains. For sure. Uh, until Eggman happens with the Chaos yes. Emerald. Yeah, he gets, he gets the Emerald... Uh... I like the stuff that he says to mock Knuckles there. Um, And he has no idea what will happen when he grips that emerald. And he is just zipped out of time. He just is gone. Like, how fucking scary would that be to, like, briefly of, like, I don't know what's going on. Especially since, like, uh, Sonic has an iPhone throughout this film. uh, And, like, that. But I think he loses it once he gets to the. gets back to Hawaii. But, um,. I would like, yeah, like, what if they come back and it's, like, some Planet of the Apes shit where, like, the whole world, like, whole world is just fucked up. <laughs> the Metropolis <laughs> zone or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That would have been if a he, crazy he, twist. He already like, won. He already won. It's too late. <laughs> yeah. Get back, Ooh, you get that, back to Hawaii and it's, that's, Hawaii that's is the like last place. Sonic 4 That's the last, Hawaii, Hawaii is the last place of refuge for the last remaining humans. <laughs> oh, Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. if that's how the movie ended? Like, oh, yeah, the whole, like giant robot we saw that was just we're just fucking with you that's not happening like this is the real ending it ends with oh eggman destroyed the entire world but hawaii and hawaii is our last place sonic we need you (laughs) uh yeah no i i liked um i like jim carrey with the emerald power I like the the electronic stuff that they amplified his voice with. Yeah, the weird, um, the creepiest thing he said, I think, in this movie was when he said, "He's like, I can smell the electricity in your brain." Yeah, as he's holding Agent Stone's face, yeah, he says that an inch away. Uh, he says that an inch away. I should say that again when I'm actually <laughs> audible. Uh, yeah, very, very creepy, very cool. Um, I, I still kind of just agree with myself from last week, uh, saying Wade kind of was wasted in this movie and could have been cut completely besides for the instances where they used his character for something, but he wasn't really great in this movie in turn. Like he just, it felt almost wonder if he had more scenes that had to get cut. You know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I did like the knife, but, the knife scene. Uh, yeah. And by the way, which I didn't notice until the second time that Eggman ate that that bagel yeah <laughs> that that fake plastic bagel and then we just need never like we never talk there's no mention How? of it yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, has a, he, just, he, it's... he has a better stomach now <laughs> yep he just absorbs it everything <laughs> right. is just energy for him um, um we kind of skipped over though but sonic and knuckles saves sonic after sonic saves him when they're drowning uh yeah and then tails is flying in. but i do like that they throw sand at each other <laughs> 
while they're talking. Well, Knuckles is being yeah, like yeah, kind yeah. of like a Debbie Downer, and then Sonic immediately throws. It doesn't even show him throwing it. It just all of a sudden he gets hit with this, <laughs> and then he throws yeah. a, like Knuckles just throws like he just a dumps it. Yeah, yeah just yeah. dumps it on him. Um, I just love that that they quickly realize they're on the same side. Um, then Tails uh, Knuckles comes. asks Knuckles asks Sonic, uh, you know, we both lost everyone in the same day in the same way but you seem happy wow and sonic says because i got new friends i replaced them i don't have trauma (laughs) exactly (laughs) you're all about trauma knuckles you spent your whole life trying to get someone needs therapy you were in a part of (laughs) most people can't afford that level of therapy well sonic Um, can just well no he his own therapist remember that's true he can also (laughs) just run to a bank and steal stuff you didn't need to pay for those Oreos. How funny would it have been if he, the the dollar bill he placed on there was actually one of the one hundred dollar bills? <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? If I'm that person who saw that happen, I'm grabbing that. Yeah, I mean they didn't pay the store. A guy dropped a dollar, hundred dollar bill. Finders keepers, <laughs> and he stole a point a thing of Oreo thins. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like the mint Oreo thins. Those are good. But then, yeah, Tails is here with the biplane. Um, again, I still kind of wish that he built the plane, that they had a scene of him just building a plane. But, okay, they used it previously in the movie, so it's here again. He commandeered it. Uh, he, we he learn later that he on. kind of upgraded it. Yeah, he, he added <laughs> some stuff to it. Um, I still would have liked to see him build anything. It, like, I still like the idea of him using just a wrench or something. Just like one simple tool to imply that like he knows. Fix one of his own gadgets. Let's say the radar needs batteries and he has to undo the back and put some bad. I don't get know. Some do double something. legs. Yeah, get some double It just looked like he he did all that stuff off screen, you know. And I like just put a little bit on and give him some character. You know, what's his work ethic like? You know, is he a really sloppy engineer? Does he just leave shit all over the place and can't find his tools? He's like, I know I have. Don't worry, these. the third one's gonna open with them fixing uh, Vin Diesel's. Well, not Vin Diesel, Dom Toretto's Mustang, and it's gonna be Tails be like, hand me the screwdriver, and then it's gonna be Dom handing him the screwdriver. <laughs> the screwdriver for a car. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what you would use a screwdriver. On, well, you but... know, like they say, like there's always that that scene in those kind of right, car right. movies where like, yo, hand me that, yo, son, hand me that. It's always the dad yeah, fixing yeah. it and like the the, the five eighths wrench. Yeah, yeah hand. But yeah, I would like if it's like a tool that doesn't make any sense. Fuck it. Screwdriver. <laughs> All done. <laughs> Thanks, kid. <laughs> he just leaves. Um, but yeah, you know, it's time to go back to Green Hills. Um, here is why Mean Bean is in Green Hills. Because otherwise, this scene would take place somewhere else. The Death Egg <laughs> Robot would be somewhere else. And they wanted it to be in Green Hills. And I do so love that's that why... he just has this and no one like makes the connection. No one knows. And hey, if the end of the movie is going to show him being undercover and gun, he could have easily have like convinced, lied, and been someone else to own you know, the coffee shop. Yeah. Self-employed. Gotta imagine that too. It didn't even look like he had any employees. It was just that's him. Self-run, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it was a nice place too. Yeah, it, looked, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't like some shitty like place Dunkin' has... Donuts looking ass place. Right. It's like no, that looks now, like a that... fancy like end like coffee. Like you're paying eighteen dollars for a coffee at that place. That's the, like, and you're in a, a town that has no money. <laughs> <laughs> you're it's in bougie. the it's middle bougie of nowhere. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if he's able to do latte art. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, like, know, that's, that's a like the first. Place. That's the first. And if if the scenery around you doesn't indicate that it's not bougie, just wait until you if see there's that an artiste. Yeah, who's that painting? Won't give you your who's cup painting of coffee an insane until scientist on that? Be like, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, with hearts around it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, we just we fight the Death Egg robot. Uh, there's a scene that I I was able to pay more attention to the second time around than the first time. Where um, uh, Sonic Tails and Knuckles are on that mound of uh, asphalt, and then they kind of do the Avengers spin around while they fight. It was fight. Avengers straight up. I, yeah. I thought of too. Yeah, that was also where um, that uh, Knuckles was leaked. Yeah, it, it was, was them standing on that mound. <laughs> that was the scene. Yeah, because the the things they were standing on asphalt rubble <laughs> in the middle of Green Hills. Um, yeah, I liked that. Uh, there was also a part where what uh, if it did the Avengers? Thing? Knuckles. I'm sure, honestly, I'm. 
once this movie comes out on Blu-ray, or if it even maybe not even then, uh, you're gonna edit together. No, the I'm saying someone's already the... gonna do it. Like I oh, can guarantee yeah. you. Like if you look up Sonic Adventures, Sonic Adventures, Sonic, Sonic Adventures. That's what they should have named Frontiers, <laughs> not Rangers Avengers. <laughs> uh, yeah, when Sonic, when in Sonic, uh, when you will just be able to YouTube Sonic the Hedgehog two Avengers scene, and like that, that'll be it. Yeah. Dun, um, dun, yeah, dun, they, dun. they didn't do too much uh, co-op stuff, cooperative moves that I would have liked. They did. They do a few briefly where like Knuckles throws Sonic that in his cool. ball form. That was cool. Um, you know, like there's a little bit of assist stuff. There is a Sonic uh, Heroes um, shot where uh, uh, Tails in the background, Sonic in the middle ground, Knuckles in the foreground, but they're all right next to each other running side by side. You know, they're just layered a little bit forward. It's 100% from Sonic Heroes. Um, I didn't really catch that the first time around. I'm like, that's cool. So we can add to the list of, of game references this movie's doing. Um, they just seemed really cool. Uh, I did find it funny, though. Uh, when they're on the mound before they begin to fight, Sonic says, we need to, you know, be a unit. It can't be, be three separate people. Uh, and then they proceed to be three separate people. But Sonic says, we need your strength your smarts, my speed. So it would make you think that they were going to come up with a plan, and then they just don't have a plan. Well, the <laughs> plan just, was, yeah. Sonic yeah. is like, I'll just distract him. You guys yeah. get inside. Which, fair. But um, I just like, he called out uh, Tails' smarts, but then Tails didn't do anything like that. It was just like, just a way to show, like, t- teamwork to the to the yeah. children out there, you know. But uh, I, di- I did like... We talked about it last time. I love the giant Death Egg robot. Um, I even think it looks good. Yeah. You know, like that first movie, Robotnik's gear, and even in this movie too, besides the pod, which is color correct with the white, black uh, pod he flies through, like the egg-shaped robots, those are those have nothing to do with the games. They just feel like this is what an executive decided, decided they should look like. Um, and like his pod at the end of the first movie was a reference to the one in the games. The one in this movie is the one from the games, essentially. Yeah. But it just felt like it's kind of the idea, and he kind of looks like Eggman, and he kind of has that stuff, whatever. This Death Egg robot is is just the one from the game. You know what I mean? That's what I love it so much. I love it. Um, No notes is just It actually reminded me the the scene where it first shows it forming with, like, the lightning, and it shows its face a little bit. It reminded me a little bit of uh, the second... Uh, legendary Godzilla film um, with like King Ghidorah and the lightning, like very similar, like with, Oh, you okay. can barely see it. It's flashing the lightning. So I'm like, I don't know. Maybe that, maybe they were inspired by that in some way. Maybe not. Maybe it's just coincidence. Regardless, it's fucking cool. But that's what it reminded me of. But yeah, and I, we have I, the I love Eggman iconography. We have like the face is matched with his logo. The beginning of the movie with that, um, the mushroom Rube Goldberg machine, the rock that presses all of the mushrooms down has in the water the on it, yeah. has his fucking logo on it from the games. I'm like, that's awesome. You know what I mean? Like first movie would not have done that. They would have been like, people won't know what this is. We should write the name Robotnik on there. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. what they would have done. Um, so like th- to me, like this, this robot, this giant expensive ass CGI robot, um, is a great example of them being like, we will use the source material as the source material and not be like, yeah, okay, giant metal man, cool. He looks like Iron Man now. You know what I mean? They like they did the thing as the thing is in the thing. Yeah. I mean it just uh, it looks so cool. And then the way they the way they use it, it's not just, you know, a like what you see in other movies, yeah, it's very robotic, uh robotic. Uh robotic and <laughs> you know, can only do a couple things. Like every time they started fighting it in a different way, he had a different answer. Like he had the mustache attack. He had la- he had knuckles shoot lasers. He had his eyeballs shoot lasers. His nose shot a laser at one point. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it all- and it's just the mobility of it felt more. I love loose. the chicken dance that it did. Yeah. Like yeah. that, like that, like that is toxic right there. Like if you like, that's <laughs> like, that is some gamer, capital g gamer like shit that's like the he basically teabagged him without the teabag in a more pro, more kid friendly way but yeah he like as a giant yeah. robot did the chicken dance when he beat your shit in <laughs> <laughs> like that is like whoo there is one part 
that I enjoyed. However, I my brain could not wrap around the fact that it was impossible. Uh, when he does the fingers running down Main Street to fight Knuckles, I'm like, your arm is not that long. You're standing on the edge of town. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your arm, that's why they don't show the arm. It's just the hand. It, and when Knuckles it's, punches it's cartoony. it, like, it's, awesome. it's just funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the robot yeah, is dope. I mean, the robot it's great. is just dope. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. And we, and we were like, we thought it was cool in the trailer, but we were, I feel like we were kind of skeptical. We're like, oh, is this going to be the last battle? But I feel like they did so many cool things with it that it, it like it was okay that we were kind of it made like because that was my disappointment with the one disappointment I had was that we kind of predicted the general flow of things. Yeah, um, we wish that we were kind of maybe more surprised, but at least it was more surprising with like what what those set pieces were. So it, For it, sure. it makes it feel less especially like, this one. Yeah, because I was like, I felt this was going to be boring because we're like, oh, Honestly. we knew it was going to happen. It was going to be some Avenger, Avengers shit. Like they're going to. Sh- dismantle his arm or something and like with lasers or something but yeah they like you know they had him be like show that he had power and then they kind of talk about the theme of like uh eggman is obsessed with killing sonic and then they use that to sonic's advantage and it's all set up for supersonic which i'm still like whatever about like i'm not like oh hell yeah yeah." like i'm just like cool because i find it just kind of cheesy but whatever, like, this movie is cheesy from the start, so I'm okay with it. And for the kids, I'm sure that they're like, "Hell yeah, this is the that's what they want to see." So, um, and it did make it like I wasn't expecting that to happen really uh, until once I saw it. Like they 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 like that Eggman absorbed it, and that's how they were going to run with this. I'm like, okay, Sonic's probably going to absorb this at some point and use it. Yeah. Um, yep. When they broke open and they were all in front of him, like, okay, yeah, they're he's gonna. They're going to do it. But, yeah, I mean, Tom and Manny were, were just ready to die right then and there. As family. <laughs> Fucked. Yeah. But yeah, what, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, obviously, this didn't happen. But what if it did happen? They made fun of Vin Diesel and The Rock in this movie, right? What if mm-hmm. right before he squishes the night? Well, and, and then, you know, uh, Tom is like, no, Sonic, we're not leaving. We're family. We stick together. And then Sonic's like, you're right. And then, like, you hear a voice in the back. Yeah, he's right. And it's fucking Vin Diesel and The Rock coming to save the day. And they're the ones that hold up the the foot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And they're like, we're family. Uh, <laughs> the Rock is taller than Vin Diesel, though. So I feel like Vin Diesel would have a hard time getting leverage. I don't care. I, don't care. I just want them both to be flexing. And then they're like, stop it quick. Okay. You need to absorb the Master okay. <laughs> Master Admiral so he can help us. We can only hold this for so long. But with family, we can, hold, we can fight yeah. him. And then Knuckles and Tails are part of the family too now. Yeah, see, missed opportunity. It's fair. I know the bill um, like it probably would be more expensive, but like think about ah, it. Ah, fuck it, <laughs> fuck it. Um, Supersonic destroys the robot. Uh, Robotnik's last words are uh, "later haters." Yeah, which I love. Um, but then, uh, yeah, we get the baseball scene. Uh. Yeah, we get the baseball scene, which is a cute, you know, nod to the first movie showing, hey, he was alone and had no friends, and he was so sad that it caused the problems of the first movie. And now this movie is like, he has friends and a family, and he's happy. I mean, they don't actually get to play baseball. The only one that they can do up they... from here is he doesn't have a girlfriend. Amy Rose. Amy here Rose, we go. Amy Rose can come yeah. to town. Yep. She's, we're, the, we're, new, we're she's not... the new girl to the school. <laughs> This, I, they have uh, a very risky scenario where they end up being like the the Alvin and the Chipmunks movie where they introduce <laughs> the female versions of them all or whatever. I, I never I saw the first one. <laughs> I didn't see them, but I just the trailers were on like every fucking kids movie. It felt like um, the Squeakquel. Uh, that's what it was called. God, I blame yeah. them for the minions happening. Smurfs do. <laughs> minions are kind of like Smurfs. We need to go back. <laughs> There's like eight of these Minions movies. They go back in time. That's one of the few things. That's one of the things I'm stopping. Here's the thing that I, one of the things that makes me the most upset about the Minions is the fact that uh, because that studio is making the Mario movie, the intro like logo for their studio is going to have a Minion in it. I guarantee. Yeah. And if I see a Minion interact with Mario in that title logo, I'm going to be upset. You're going to walk out. That's what you should do. I will walk out. Review it one star. I'll say, like, fuck Minions. <laughs> You yell that. 
It's opening night. We're all excited to see Mario. Everyone's wearing their Mario hats. Here comes the minion. Oh, fuck minions. <laughs> he and he's like, you have a big popcorn. You just throw it across the theater. You're just pissed off. Oh, God. It's fuck people And, who and, do and you're walking out, and you just have the middle finger up to the, the screen. <laughs> um, We get the credits. I will say this. I like the song this time around better than the first one. It's a little bit more catchy. Um, yeah. I think they're both yeah. catchy, though. I think they're both catchy. But sure. this one's a little bit more, like, alternative. And... For the first movie's credits, they did the, you know, pixelated old school game graphics retelling of the movie. But I called it very lazy. I thought it was very much like we're going to reuse uh, some, some Sonic sprites that exactly happened. But then when we make new ones, they're going to look kind of off. Everything looks off. Nothing feels like it's cohesive. This looks, this one is a lot better. Um, I enjoy this one quite a bit. It looks, obviously they they spent more money on getting people to make it. But it actually looks like a modern day, um, you see some games come out nowadays that are like, they have pixel graphics, but they're not trying to be like, we are an NES game. We adhere to the color restrictions and this and that, or the number of pixels in a, in a sprite. This looks like the modern type of thing of like, we're just made out of pixels, but we have an art style. This felt very cohesive and I enjoyed the end I was going to say the Sonic um, design that they showed in that one, he like would look at the camera, I guess you could say, when he looked at the audience. Um, like, that was straight from the games. But it looked like it looked like uh, Sonic Adventure 2, like, art design a little bit. Like, I think that's what it was inspired yeah. mostly by. Because he had, like, the big, I guess, uh, M eyes, like a, I'm thinking like a letter M, where his, like, eyes yeah, formed yeah, around yeah. his face. Um, but, yeah, it was, yeah, I think it was a lot better this time. But, uh, and, uh and then obviously our post credits our, our mid credit mid post credit scene technically uh there's no sure. end end credit scene you know yeah which which the, was... the credits scene yeah that's what we'll call it <laughs> and um, uh once again like something distracted me or like i i couldn't hear exactly what they said like in full but i'm like they're they've been studying something or they found something no so they what's the, do you they, know what it is so uh when robotnik comes out of the mean bean and gun is there Olive Garden guy says, uh, it's over. We took all of your uh, your gear, your labs, your drones, and your funding. So he says that then. In this post or this this credit scene, uh, just some gun agent says to him, when we were sweeping through all of his stuff, we found a file or whatever it was that was coordinates that led to a secret research facility with stuff dated 50 years old. At le- over 50 years ago and then it reveals shadow and then we hear someone i think it's just olive garden guy saying project shadow yeah is what it was um but so name, that's what they said they found shadow, it. though <laughs> it's carl it's Ka- <laughs> carl the hedgehog yeah 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 um we'll talk about where we think this will go in the next episode of this show um but i you know not a whole lot of people were like reacting to this and my showing for this the second time i was kind of upset like yeah, the first one that was the pop-off was shadow, shadow the fucking that's shadow i remember my, my guy a couple rows down or a couple of seats down who's really hyped throughout the whole movie was like that's shadow hey that's shadow <laughs> like it is dog. i saw dude. his shoes i'm like oh yeah and he opens his eyes i didn't even remember that i, the lie, first I thought time. it was robot sonic at first like when i first like it's saw fan well, i'm saying when i saw the feeks it looked because it had he has like these uh looks like brackets on his legs like holding them in place so it looked mechanical at first when it, at first i gotcha glance. um i gotcha but yeah uh before we wrap this up do we want to quickly say that like because we'll well by the time of this recording it's like i said sunday april 10th but uh according to eric davis who works for fandango i believe yes fandango okay. and rotten tomatoes damn he double dipping um he tweeted out that and this was in the morning of April 10th, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be actually more. Uh, we still have a whole 24 hours, basically, for that to update. But as of early April 10th, he said box office, big numbers for Sonic Movie 2, which opens at $71 million. And you're like, okay, that's a lot of money, but what does that compare to last time? He says ten. that's $10 million more than the first film's $58 million open. So it's probably going to be more than that. It might have been close to 15 20 which is also crazy considering this is we're still in a pandemic. And that was pre-pandemic. 
you know, people are going to theaters more, but maybe this is just like, yeah. like we kind of talked about like two episodes ago, three episodes ago that we predicted it might be around the same. I don't think we said more, but we think we thought around the same because I think it was going to be more, um, but not by a whole lot. Um, um, we had to remember too, that first movie was just a few weeks before, like it had enough weeks to make that money before it was like, all right, there's a there's a problem. We need to actually pay attention to current events now. And people stopped going to movies. You know what I mean? Like if that movie came out a couple weeks later, it would have been l- l- fucked. Because it's easy for me to think and say, oh, well, Sonic 2 will easily beat it in the long run because it will just be in theaters yeah. for longer than Sonic 1. Like the, but the it had a good tale. Um, I get it. Uh, so. But yeah, uh, this is also the first maybe like family movie that's been out in quite some time You're not taking your family to see morbius <laughs> or I that mean, yes. uh, channing tatum and sandra bullock movie that all of a sudden just existed one day and i see ads for it on twitter i'm like this is just the jungle cruise movie <laughs> with two other guy people yeah um but yeah uh then uh to continue though 10 so 10 million plus more than the first films 58 million dollar open that's actually 12 million plus but i think it's gonna be closer to 15 maybe 20 uh we'll see that's a lot of money difference by the way we're talking about millions folks uh but then this is the biggest opening and this is the big one the biggest opening ever for a video game adaptation in the united states yeah. so sonic previous movie record two, holder was the first movie yeah but Sonic movie two is about right. ready to maybe add a bigger lead to that uh than the first one um this is the second biggest opening for a film this year granted it's only mid-april but there's been a lot of movies that have come out in the last three months, including Uncharted. You know, that like the fact True. that this was and that was with Tom Holland, <laughs> who's one of the top stars right now. So to see that, you know, I think is significant to be in the second. I will say opening. this. This movie, they spent their marketing dollars successfully for this movie. They spent it smartly. All I ever saw. And then granted, yes, there is a bias because we have a podcast about this fucking movie. I get it. Like my feeds are going to be different than other people's potentially regarding this, but like this was everywhere. It was new stuff, constantly slightly more stuff to see about this movie. It was on they did the billboards. Super Bowl shit. It was, on it was like just on the side of a bus in England for reasons. <laughs> right. Right. Uncharted. I don't remember advertising for it besides just seeing the trailers. Yeah. They were relying, you know? I feel like on Tom Holland to be like their advertisement and, and Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then there's one last thing here. And I think this is actually crazy. Like the other ones are bigger news, but this one's crazy. Like it's like a fun fact for you, but this was Jim Carrey's biggest opening of his career. And what's funny is he's been talking about, that this might have been his last movie. How cool would it be? I don't want him, want this to be his last movie. Like I would love for him to do Sonic Three or whatever or other shit in general. But this is his last one. Way to like if and if this is the rate it's going, this could be his biggest movie. And a way to like end it like that at the top yeah. top of your like in terms of money. I maybe. wonder what his biz, his second biggest movie was then. Yeah, I got because I would not have thought this, but then I'm like. I mean, besides with the the one Batman movie from a long ass time ago, it might how have many been, like might have been the Batman movie? Maybe family friendly blockbusters has he been a part of? Yeah, because early on he did a lot of more risque, you know, Ace Ventura's and The Mask, Bruce Almighty. Maybe I could see Bruce like Almighty he's... being kind of like the like a dark horse in, in terms of if I had a guess. Um, What's that one movie he did that was like a uh, more serious work for him? I forgot that name of the movie. Uh, um, the Truman Show. Not that one, but yes, <laughs> that's the Truman Show. I know Truman Show like did pretty well, if I remember correctly. But yeah, it, it, like that's crazy that this is his biggest opening of, of his career, and then maybe they'll potentially make him make this his biggest movie that he's done. Also, that might change his. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Do you know it? We all forget about this. Uh, we all forget about this. Uh, oh, there is a ranking. So this is 10. This is uh, radiox.co.uk. 
Uh, I'll just rake off uh, the the ten apparent highest box office movies that he was in. So this is overall, uh, though, not just like because this, this is the same best biggest opening. Right, I understand. Career, and like, this will seeing what number one is and how much money number one is. Sonic will beat this or get very close. Number ten, a series of unfortunate events. Oh yeah, I forgot. He was about the villain that. in that. Yeah, that was two hundred nine million. Ace Ventura: When Nature Calls was two twelve. Okay. Yes, Man from two thousand eight yeah. was two twenty three. Dumb and Dumber two forty seven. The Truman Show, 264. Liar, Liar, breaking just over 300 million. Wow. Batman Forever, there at number is. four, was 337. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, remember yes, that? That's a banger right there. 345. I would that one. Number two, The Mask, 352. Wow. People I would love not have expected that love... to actually make Dude, money. The 90s was wild. <laughs> and number one, Bruce Almighty, with so we were right. With Bruce Almighty. Million. I feel like that was a, yeah. a kind of a secret one there. Sonic will get over 300, obviously. Um, so Sonic the Hedgehog is... When was that list made? Because Sonic the Hedgehog isn't on that list at all. Because I feel like Sonic got more than fair. all those. This was written January 17th, 2021. Did they not count Sonic for something? Was that in... Yeah, why? Because Sonic was... Uh, how much did the first Sonic movie make, Sonic? It was in 300-something. Th- yeah. Three hundred and nineteen dollars, three hundred nineteen million dollars. Three hundred nineteen was bucks. Sonic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the first one is basically. Um, oh, he was also in a Christmas Carol. Yeah, he was the, the which was three hundred twenty-five uh, million. Stooge or whatever his name was. What, what, what's the what's the guy's name? The the guy who hates Christmas. All right, I have an actual list here from Jim Carrey Online dot com. Okay, if this isn't right, then they failed as fans. <laughs> This goes down to 35. Okay, you don't have to read uh, all of them. Let's do top five. The top 10. Or top 10. Because uh, it's a different top. Oh, yeah. The top 10 has more movies. Okay. Top 10 starts with Dumb and Dumber. Then it's Truman Show. Then Horton Hears a Who. Oh, yeah. Then He's Liar, Liar. Sonic the Hedgehog. A Christmas Carol. Batman Forever. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The Mask. Bruce Almighty. So, so you got to beat Bruce Almighty for this to be... Yeah, but it's supposed to be the biggest it's, opening. It's but like I said, like it's possible. it's possible. Oh, opening weekends. I have this. Oh, you Jim have Carrey that? Online has it as Let's well. Let's go, Jim Carrey Online. Jim Shout Carrey out to Jim Online. Carrey Online. Do they have a Twitter by the way? Opening we'll weekend. Them. We'll follow them. If they have a Twitter. So it's in the ranking is in total gross. So the opening weekend isn't completely like that. But number one seems to also be Bruce Almighty with no Sonic the Hedgehog with seventy one or no Sonic. Wait. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is in here already um, as 18 because it's at $141 million. Let's see, ignoring that, his highest opening would have been Bruce Almighty with 67.9, followed by The Grinch at 55. No, Sonic the Hedgehog actually was 58. Okay, so... So Bruce, Al- Bruce Almighty is 67. So he's on... If, 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 if hopefully it keeps at that rate, that he might be... This might be his best movie. Yeah, I... I yeah. That's crazy. But that's awesome too. We, Jim Carrey online. Yeah, do they have, do, you have, they, do they have a Twitter? Do, do you see on their website anywhere where they have a Twitter? If they do, we got to make sure we follow them. Yeah. Also, this website is like was made in two thousand four, and I love that they're keeping this shit up. Shout out to whoever's running this shit. This is dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's links. Official movie sites. Do they have every? Wow! The first version of this site as uh, Jim they were Jim Carrey online versions one, two, and three. First one was this uh, was 1996. They, yes, the name was not Jim Carrey we online. One. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. They're the real ones. They're the real ones. And luckily, I love that they have Sonic the Hedgehog too on the right, like in big a big box. <laughs> Like it's a it's a banner ad type thing, yeah. like a wraparound ad. But like they, I don't think that and they. I love bought... that they have Bruce Almighty, his Bruce Almighty character praying, and like it's perfectly photoshopped to where it has clouds, and then Sonic the Hedgehog and Eggman as if like they're in the same scene together. <laughs> yeah, that's. I awesome. love too in this this about uh, the thing on the right. It says the tenth anniversary, which would have been two thousand six. <laughs> It's like, bro, you're at, you've passed the twentieth anniversary of your of your website. They, I, this is you know how like we have a vault, the, like in America, there's like a vault. I think somewhere in Pennsylvania with like supposedly they pick out what they believe like 
the best human achievements have been and like some they have music they have movies in there this website needs to be stored in there somehow that like there's some... a fan area that has a forum oh david oh. sonic the hedgehog yes they do yes i love this i love it this is a whole other project right here this is a whole other project i'm glad we found this sonic 2 fan reviews i think we need an area here to let fans say how they feel about sonic 2 i haven't seen it yet but those who have can share that's a poem someone wrote that's awesome i love i love these human beings already weird okay uh this has been a fun episode (laughs) um i i think our our personal ratings will stay about the same and i feel like you said that and i feel like i'm i'm the same way with mine um this movie is very good we both enjoyed it we might see it another time in a new format maybe we'll see but uh yeah this is the definitive review of the Sonic movie uh 2. Why don't we do a ranking? Hey, this movie's better than the first one. Yeah. So it goes 2 then 1. You, you want you want <laughs> Oh, I thought you were like I'm like what are you ranking it with? Just what other movie? Know. Yes, uh, yes. Well, one. when we get the Knuckles show and Sonic 3, I feel like it'll be more of an interesting uh, thing. But yeah, the Knuckles TV show is next year and then Sonic 3 uh, we got, we got will be the year over. after. But to be fair, yeah. it like with the pandemic, it doesn't feel like it's been two years since the fair. first one. Like I'm like, oh wow, we already got a second one. Like it's here. We're also like a lot older, you know. We're just at the points in our lives where like, like a video game will be announced, and then I'll be so excited for it, and then I'll just forget about it, and then it's out, and I'm like, wait a second, yeah, how long has it been? We're too busy to like have any yeah. other <laughs> time to think about getting hypes. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. hype for a day and then it's back to go back to work <laughs> next episode we will uh, most likely give our predictions for sonic 3 and the knuckles tv show mm-hmm. and i guess future stuff but really just about these projects um and then uh yeah we will see what happens in the future with sonic the hedgehog in the sonic verse follow us on twitter oh yeah are they gonna have a, a stupid name for this universe i hope not i hope they the go sonic against verse. the grain they're like no i want i want the sega to ruin it and be like, we have a Sega cinematic universe. There's a Yakuza uh, movie, and it's, and it's in, the, in the same world as Sonic. I mean, you there's could a Puyo pull Puyo that movie. You could pull off the Yakuza in the Sonic world. Alex Kidd, Altered Beast. Yeah, I want Altered Beast to be... <laughs> Virtua Fighter, <laughs> Virtua Racer, Virtua Cop, House of the Dead. All of these in the same universe. Uh, you could do that. Oh, and uh, they it. also bought Atlas, so Persona. <laughs> you could easily and, all do these as separate things, but have them all loosely connect. And then they do, what would be the the name for the Avengers, but for Sega? Sega All-Stars? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> Team Sonic Racing. All right. Our Twitter account for the show is at Sonic Movie Show. I am on Twitter at Ethan, absolutely. And Devin is on Twitter at Cursona Fun. Thank you guys for listening to this second review of this second movie. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Gotta go fast. I'm gonna go across the ocean.